blessings to you from God our Father, and welcome to the Gut Health video series, Making Gut Sense of It All, brought to you by Taylor's Holistic Approach in Lake Elsinore, California. My name is Jenny Taylor Robinson, and I am the founder and steward for Taylor's Holistic Approach Ministries, a ministry focused on God and good health, and gut health. I am a certified holistic health coach, I received my certification in 2015 from the Institute for Integrative Nutrition, and it's also known as IIN. I am a lover and a follower of Christ. I'm a mom, a mommy, a nani, a G-mom, a GG, and a nana to some of my God grandkids. I am also a singer, background, and also an interpretive dancer. What and where is Lake Elsinore, you might ask? Well, Lake Elsinore is located in Southern California. It's been around since 1888. Um, it's 34 miles from Riverside, and it's 24 miles from Marsh Air Reserve Base, for those of you who are more familiar with um, the air bases. And the city is built around this 3,000-acre natural freshwater lake, and it was originally known as La um, it was Laguna Grande but now it bears the name of the city like Elsinore. So it is my hope and my prayer that through our times together that you will gain a better understanding of this amazing part of our biological makeup, exactly what it is, its functions and purposes, and how to begin your journey of healing. The ministry's mission is to empower individuals to realize and embrace change in each season of their lives. It is to make necessary changes to live longer, healthier lives, which is God's original plan. With this in mind, we envision ministering the mission of change so that all can experience the fullness of the calling that God has given them. Before we go any further, let us pray to God for blessings and guidance through uh, this process as we move forward. Grace is God our Father. We come to you thanking you, O oh God, for another chance, another opportunity to give you thanks, praise, and honor. You declare in your word in 2 Timothy 3, 16 to 17, all scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. As we reference your word to teach, to rebuke, to correct, and train, Illuminate your heart desire for good health to carry out your plan of ministry for us all. The good work you've placed in our hearts, the good works that you have given us gifts to carry out, the good works that you've given us glimpses of in our daydreams or in our times of slumber. We ask you, O oh God, just to forgive us for not being good stewards of our temples. Forgive us for taking our temples for granted. But we're here now, Lord. We're willing and we know that you are able, able to do exceedingly and abundantly above more than we could ever imagine, as you promised in your word, because of the work and the power that is in work within us, because of you, O oh God. Give us what we need to make necessary changes for a God-ordained, healthier life, using your food as medicine. In Jesus' name, and all who agree, please click on the reply button and respond, Amen. Amen. The ministry scripture reference is Genesis 1, 11 through 13. Then God said, let the land produce vegetation, seed-bearing plants and trees on the land that bear fruit with seed in it according to their various kinds. And it was so. The land produced vegetation, plants bearing seed according to their kinds and trees bearing fruit with seed and according to their kinds. And God saw that it was good, and there was evening and there was morning the third day. God knew that sin and sickness would enter the world through their first earthly human creation by the power of choice. In his sovereignty, he already had made provisions before he created man. On the third day when he made the vegetation, he endowed the power of healing within the vegetation. The concept of sustainability through sustenance was God's original plan. The soil fed the vegetation, 
the vegetation that the man who came from the soil and the woman who came from the man. It was a full circle of life. It just makes sense. God didn't forget anything when he created the world. He created vegetation and uh, to nourish and to heal. He also gave us water for hydration, circulation, and restoration. Man has made these things and tried to replicate them and tried to add things synthetically to them. But the problem is we're not synthetic beings. So in this video, Making Gut Sense of It All, each month's gut focal point will be introduced like on the first Sunday of the month. In the weeks following, we will discuss related topics for that focal point. At the end of each video, um, the topic for the next week will be announced. For the month of May, our focus point will be what the gut? Ground zero. Today's video in the series will start from the beginning to explain what the gut is and the process your food goes through from intake to exit. In the coming months, we will explore how emotional, spiritual, physical, and mental health all play a part in you finding your gut balance. Each followed by things that we can do to better serve our temple. Please feel free to comment. Um, each video presentation will be approximately 20 to 30 minutes long, and then we'll always have five to 10 minutes at the end for um, a Q&A session. These videos are meant to build awareness, fuel curiosity, and your desire to take charge of your health. Do your own research. Find what works for you. Everyone is different and you have to find your own balance. The videos are not meant to uh, diagnose, to treat, or to cure any disease issues or symptom that you are experiencing, but they are meant to start your body on a healing journey so that you can fight against the things that seek to wreak havoc in your life and to affect your quality of life. No matter what age or stage in life, that you're presently in, if you are willing, God is able. You have to believe that. So um, let's set some guidelines. Number one, let the Holy Spirit lead you. This means being prayerful. It means listening. And after you listen and you hear, then doing, obeying, obeying what you're hearing. Number two, we're in this thing together which means to encourage and celebrate others and also to check in on everybody. Everybody needs support. So check in on people you know or people you want to get acquainted with. Number three, don't get hung up on slip-ups because for some there will be slip-ups. Uh, don't beat yourself up about it. Uh, it happens. It will happen. Just acknowledge it and, um, and be prayerful about it and then keep going forward. Number four, Every day God gives you is a wake-up call for new mercies because we know that in Lamentations 3.22 through 23, as the English Standard Version says, um, it echoes the sentiment of God's love. It says, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Number five, accept compliments without downplaying what God is doing. We have a habit of doing that. Just like, oh, girl, you look good. Oh, you know, I'm trying, but blah, blah, blah. No, um, we just need to uh, re recognize that this is an opportunity, an opportunity to testify about the goodness of God and what he's doing in your life and how he's doing it and to witness in us and, and to also witness to encourage others to join you um, in your discovering their balance, also to just be prayerful for you if they're not in that space. And that's one thing about this whole thing is you have to be ready. Um, you have to have that mindset of I'm going to do it like this time. Um, and so number uh, six is give thanks to God for your journey every step of the way. We can't do it without God. He is our, our biggest supporter. Um, he wants better for us than we want for ourselves. So any little thing, any little victories, a little victory is a big victory. And they say a, whole, a little bit of something is a better than a whole lot of nothing. So give God thanks 
Um, and lastly, this is an individual togetherness thing. Um, this brings to mind this um, term that is used at IIN, and it's called bio-individuality. And this simply means everybody is different. Uh, what works for one person or maybe a group of people may not work for you. So when you try something that somebody says they got results from, and you try it and you don't get the same results and you don't get results at all, don't get discouraged. It's because it just wasn't for you. It's not in your way of finding your balance. So just strike it off your list and continue on your search for finding your balance, finding what works for you. Because we're all unique. God, he doesn't make duplicates. So um, even if you're an identical twin, you walk alike, you talk alike, you think alike, you like the same things, there is something unique about each of you. So I pray that God will, for gut health awareness, will be manifested in you all, in us all, because it's, it's a continuous thing to where you have to think about it. Um, but you have to realize in life that as you um, age and things change, then you have to change also. The solution to improve health is simple but challenging. It's challenging, but it's, up, it's obtainable. It takes being prayerful, stubborn, determined, and consistent. Old habits and acquired tastes are sometimes difficult, if not impossible, if, but it's not impossible to change. Just keep in mind through your journey whether um, you're serious about the change or whether you saw the um, ad and or you heard about it and you just stopped by to see if, if there was going to be anything new said. Um, newsflash, there's nothing new. For real change, eat real food. That is just almost as simple as that. Um, the difficulty changes comes because we're so used to a lot of things that are not not good for us. So um, you just have to continue to be prayerful um, and push on. There's a lot of programs out today. Um, there's pills, powders, liquids, um, certain exercise regimens. But if you notice, they all underline their guarantee with uh, sensible diet, exercise, water, and rest. So, have you ever thought about trying all of those things without trying their products? Something to think about. So ladies, so let that, let's get started. What is the gut? Let's start is what the gut ground zero. So we're going to talk today about the functions and the process that your food goes through uh, from intake to exit. Hippocrates, he was a Greek physician, dubbed the father of Western medicine, 2,000 years ago, said all disease began in the gut. While most people in those days, they thought disease was a result of a curse by gods. And, but he, his deduction was it was caused by, um, it was a product of the environment, uh, factors, it was your diet, uh, your living habits, and so he was on track because the environment, what you eat, and how you live has a direct effect on your gut balance. So it just makes sense that we start from ground zero, the place that is exposed to everything we digest. Enter the gut. Let's start by determining what the gut is. Anyone? And so I have like my camera turned around so I can't really see comments or anything. So um, I'll just give it time and then you can read if other people are commenting on what the gut is. And then I'll just proceed. Technically, the gut is your entire gastrointestinal tract that starts in your mouth and ends down south. It's approximately 30 feet of hollow tubing um, and so I have an illustration of what it looks like. So this is, uh, starts in your mouth, goes down, this is your stomach, the next, the, after, the next stop after your mouth, 
and then it goes down into your small intestines, out into your large intestines, and down the side. The process of digestion sometimes starts even before food is put into your mouth. Has anyone ever experienced salivation? I didn't say salvation. I pray that we're all saved. If we're not, I hope that this these videos, this video or video series inspires you to accept Christ as your Savior. Uh, but this is when the thought, the smell, or the sight of food starts this involuntary flow of saliva um, and to salivate. Yes. Um, so saliva is 98% water. And then mucus, antibacterial compounds, and um, electrolytes make up the other 2%. So when food enters your mouth and you begin to chew, three sets of salivary glands take place. And the salivary glands are um, by the cheek, under the tongue, and under the jaw. Foods, food goes through a mechanical and a chemical process digestion as it goes through your system. So for the mechanical, uh, it works on food from a physical standpoint. And the chemical breaks it down from a molecular standpoint, on the molecular level. So in the mouth, the mechanical is the chewing or the breaking down the food into smaller particles. The more you chew, the better. Your saliva contains an enzyme that starts to break and break down and start to change uh, carbs or starch into sugars. So um, how, how many times do you chew before you swallow? Does anybody count or anybody heard, you know, how much, how long you're supposed to chew, how many times you're supposed to chew before swallowing? Well, I've heard anywhere from 30 to 100 times and I've tried, not the 100, but I've tried doing 30, 40, and it's just, um, it's, it's not, it's hard. It, it's difficult because before you know it, it's just like, just get this over with, just, you know, or you lose track of counting or whatever. Uh, but the suggestion that it's easier for me that I like best, it says chew into liquid. So if you chew into liquid, it gives it that first set of enzymes that's in your saliva time to coat, really coat and get into and start their chemical breakdown. And so it's, so it's best to, if you can, try to be more conscious of your chewing because uh, so many people who have tried this have either, it has improved or gotten rid of certain digestive problems. So, um, or and some of them have even lost weight. So it's something, you know, that you might want to think about the next time um, that you're, you're eating is to really chew your food up properly. The food is softened by water and then the mucus that's, in tank, that's contained inside of your saliva coats it for transport down your esophagus so it doesn't scratch going down. Um, and also your esophagus is mucus lined tissue, has mucus lined tissue. Have you ever experienced something going down the right, wrong pipe? This is like a side note. So there is a little thing, a little flap that opens and closes, and it's called an epiglottis. And it keeps food and liquid from going in your airways uh, and down in your lung area. And so when we're eating and sometimes something gets past there, that causes the violet coughing and the strangulation. So just a little side note. Note. So on with the, 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 um, the journey of your food. So you're swallowing and it's going down your esophagus and it goes to your stomach, which is the next stop. There the breakdown continues uh, with the mechanical, the stomach muscles or throwing your, tossing your food around and grinding it up into making it even smaller uh, pieces. And then you get your next or your second chemical bath, uh, which when the stomach um, rises and it senses that there is food in there, um, hydrochloric acid is released to lower your pH and turn around two. And this process is to kill off any unwanted bacteria or any pathogens that may be uh, present in your food. 
Um, so when it comes to pH, pH is the measure of acidity. Uh, a pH of three down to zero is very acidic. And so in this, in this process, your proteins, um, this, S, this acid begins to unwind the proteins in your stomach uh, in order to prepare them for digestion. Um, so the uh, stomach also produces an alkaline mucus and this alkaline mucus protects your stomach lining from the low pH acid. So this process continues until the stomach senses that its job is done um, and it begins the process of passing the now mostly liquid unrecognizable uh, substance if you chewed <laughs> correctly um, down into your small intestines and it passes it down two to three teaspoons at a time. Carbs stay in your stomach around two hours, uh, fats around four, and proteins between two, two to four hours. In the small intestines, enzymes released from your pancreas and your liver continue the chemical breakdown. The majority of the carbs and fats digested here and any of the remaining protein uh, is absorbed here in your small intestines. So the small intestines absorbs most of your nutrients and vitamin B12. Now, the mostly liquid substance, if you chew properly, is passed to the large intestines. So um, it's also called the colon. The colon contains most of our gut bacteria. There more bacteria, there's more bacteria in your colon um, in our gut, back to, in our, uh, excuse me, there's more bacteria in our gut than humans on the planet. So, um, as the liquid enters into the colon, it starts to extract the water and, and push salts back into your body. So this is a process, is it's, abstract, it's um, extracting water, pumping salts, extracting water, pumping salts. After this process is complete, you have this indigestible fiber that ferments in your gut and ferments in your colon, and it produces vitamins, minerals, and fatty acids. This process, uh, it also um, can regulate your inflammation, hormones, and your immunity. So you can see from start to finish, our body um, is doing everything it can to defend so that it can nourish us. Um, the remaining fiber and other waste uh, are prepared to leave the body by um, contractions that happen three to four times a day uh, into the rectum before it goes, and then at a certain time it's released. So um, just to go back over um, the journey of your food, so you have in your mouth and then down your esophagus. And this is a little um, epiglottis that I was talking about. Um, and then into your stomach. And then it passes down to your small intestines and then out to your colon and then out down south. So this whole process is just amazing and it was created by God and um, it's just an awesome, awesome thing. And we just have to learn how to take care of the miracle that God has given us um, that, houses his, that houses him. And so we just have to be more careful. So then we're not done yet. So it's out. So after you've done all this processing and it's passed through and then you release now we would come to the next part of our discussion. So once the release comes, it's in uh, its form, it's coming out, it's also just as important as what comes in, the way it comes in. So there is a chart called the Bristol stool chart, and it's used to diagnose how your system is doing, uh, how your system is functioning. And so um, you have to become a poopologist. Uh, and uh, so you have to, to, to look and realize like, okay, uh, that doesn't look right, that doesn't smell right, um, the form is not good, but you have to really try to study to see what's going on. Because remember, 
um, when I said the last process, uh, one of the last processes, when your when your digested foods in your colon and the water is extracted and salts are pumped back into the system, um, then it becomes solid. So the longer this stuff sets in your colon, the more solid it is, and it's still pulling out water, still pulling out water, and that you get constipation. So it's good not to hold it, you know, too long, um, but to release it because the longer it sets there, the water is still being pulled out um, and it creates constipation. So for those of you who um, are, or bothered with constipation on a regular basis, um, just remember plenty of water, um, do your uh, dietary fiber, which is fruits and vegetables, and also exercise is a good uh, way of keeping your, um, your system going. It doesn't have to be vigorous exercise. It could be as uh, simple as walking. Um, they have these things called rebounders, They're like the, if you see them, they're these round little trampolines, and just kind of like bouncing up and down on them will help, you know, your mobility. Um, and um, low impact aerobics if you're able to, light jogging if you're able to, um, but it all plays a part in just helping your movement. Um, so just like when, um, when things are sitting your colon too long and you, you create constipation, well, the opposite is for diarrhea. It goes through your system too quickly. So this could be from like a lack of fiber um, or it could be that something in your system um, senses something that's harmful. So it spews it out at whatever, the closest exit, you know, people, you know, they, it comes out of your mouth or it comes out down south. Um, have anybody ever experienced food poisoning? So your body jumps into fight mode to defend you from anything that threatens to damage you. Um, so... Uh, you have to examine your stool and make sure of the necessary changes. So um, not only do we have to watch what we eat, but you know how it comes out, like I said before. Um, so let's take a look. I have pulled up a Bristol stool chart and told to see about uh, how the stools look. So I hope you can see this. So it's got these little hard pebbles, and we know that that's severely constipated, or you might have a, a log, but it's hard and it's lumpy. Um, that's constipation. Then you have this um, log or sausage-like, and it has cracks, but it was easy to pass, and that's normal. Or you have this smooth um, sausage snake-like, and uh, that's normal. It's easy to pass. But then you get down to type five, to where you have these, um, these soft, unclear cut edges. And so that's, um, that's diarrhea, maybe lacking fiber. And then um, you have this other ones, um, and more type six uh, is another type of diarrhea. And it may be causing inflammation because this one is mushy and it has no uh, it has no clear cut edges. And then with type seven, it's completely liquid. Um, it's also could be a sign. It is a sign of some kind of inflammation in your body. These charts can be found. You can Google. You can Google Bristol stool chart, or you can just Google a stool chart, and they have different kind of variations uh, to guide you into um, to see you know what's going on with your body well that's the journey of your food from your mouth to the stomach. the process of digestion takes 24 to 72 hours um, time time will differ uh, like factors of what you've eaten uh, your mood has a lot to do with how you digest some people are just slow digesters that's okay, um, and only if it just, you know, if it comes, becomes a problem of, you know, constipation, then you want to have it looked at. Um, sometimes people, other 
people's colons are longer than others, so it may, the transit time may take a little bit longer. So that's why I gave it a range of 24 to 72 hours. Um, it's amazing what our body goes through without any direction of thought from us. Um, only God can create such a miracle. So if you have any questions, any, uh, anything that I've shared um, at this time, um, I am open. Q&A is now open. And I am going to turn my camera around so that I can see from it. Okay, we have a question from Candace, and she says, are detoxes needed slash recommended to clean stomach, colon, liver, etc.?" cetera? Um, I would say only in extreme cases. Um, if you just um, change, try just changing your diet um, I, and getting more fiber, dietary fiber, fruits and vegetables, drinking more water, um, uh, you can detox. Um, but some of them are harsh, so just kind of maybe kind of read up on what you think is that you can do, what's doable. Because some people, I've seen detoxes and they're like, you know, they take these things that help them detox. But you can do like a bone broth cleanse, uh, which is, um, I will probably talk about that um, later on too, but... Um, there's other types of ways that you can quote clean your stomach because your, your your colon actually cleans itself um the growling that we hear is actually part of the process of our stomach being cleaned so if you are a relatively clean eater um and then you know maybe you can do a light detox or just you know watch your intake of processed foods or anything like that so thank you for uh your question did that um did that answer was that the answer you wanted or did that answer your question because i know there's all kind of stomach cleanses colon cleanses liver cleanses and i just think that you know for people who are maybe severely overweight, uh, whose body has been abused uh, for a length of time that they they really need that cleansing, um, then, you know, that is a booster. But sometimes people use that as, okay, I'm clean and now I go back to what I'm doing. Um, but we just have to realize that this is a, this is a life-changing event you don't, when you, you know, as you grow older, even like an infant, when you grow older, you eat different. And then when you're middle age, you eat different. And when you're elderly, it should change in every stage of your life. Uh, you should make some kind of dietary adjustments uh, because your body has been working for a long time and it doesn't work the same way. So we just have to be mindful of that. Hi, Phyllis. We're in the Q&A now, so um, if uh, anybody else has any questions, um, I will entertain them now. Okay, so it doesn't look like we have any questions. So um, I hope this video has motivated you to become more active in your temple's upkeep. Uh, we have to put work in to make sure that we're doing all we can do so that we can give God our best and that we can use our gifts to give others our best. Um, until, so the next, our next video, um, our ne my next video will be next Sunday. Uh, same time, we could, we'll continue on um, the gut. Uh, the whole series is about the gut, but uh, we will, I'm trying to find. 
because I said I would announce what we're talking about next week. So next um, next week we're talk about the subject is time will tell. And so I touched a little bit on it uh, just a minute ago, my saying about um, as our body changes, then our um, our diet and everything about us, we have to adjust along the way. Uh, we just can't keep doing things that we used to do. It's like, well, I've heard so many people say, well, I've always done this and I've taken care of myself this long. And I'm like, yeah, but you've never been this age before. You've never been in this stage of your life before. So it's always good to um, pay attention to what your body is telling you and follow suit. So um, yes, next week we'll be, we'll talk about time will tell. Okay, so um, if no one has any more questions, um, like I said, I hope this has blessed you and I hope you will continue to um, watch the series. God has a lot planned. Um, he's given me an outline until um, the end of September. So every week um, we will be discussing different parts of gut health and each month will be a different focal point. So this month's focal point was just talking about um, the process and it was talking about like the foundational work. So I think it's important for us to really know um, how our system works in order to be more conscious of how we take care of it. So um, if there is nothing else, um, I will say until next time, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face Will you consider questions if they are sent before next Sunday? Of course, yes, Iva. Um, if you would, um, if you want to um, send me an email to Taylor's Holistic Approach, um, Taylor's Holistic Approach at gmail.com. You can always send questions there, and also, um, or just send me a uh, a messenger on my Facebook page, Taylor Holistic Approach Ministries, and I will um, get to your questions uh, when we adjourn uh, next Sunday. Um, same time, uh, same. Uh, I will post this also on um, YouTube. I know some people were saying that they don't have um, Facebook or they aren't on Facebook, so I will be posting my videos also on YouTube. Okay, so until next time, the Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine up on you. The Lord turn his face toward you and to, to give you peace and strength in your journey for good health. God bless.